But seriously, are these people human? I'm um, serious question. Welcome to episode 47 of New Zealand Rough About. I'm super excited about this one because it's one of my favorite Disney movies out of the classic ones. To me, it has one of the most beautiful scores they've ever put out. But I don't know much about the stage show. In fact, I know nothing <laughs> except that Patrick Page is playing Frollo, which means the, the excitement just doubled, tripled. Times a million! <laughs> Hades himself. Now, I know there are a few bootlegs out there, but I'd rather focus on the music for this one since I already know the story. So I'll be reacting to the original cast recording today. And I have a special guest with me today that only the OGs on this channel will recognize. Ta da! I've been waiting for this moment for so long. <laughs> And if by the end of this video, you're still thirsty for that sweet theater content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. There are a lot more videos coming up. I don't think this series will ever end, to be honest. <laughs> God have mercy. So hit that subscribe button and the little bell to be notified about what is coming up. I am also on Patreon where you get some extra content while supporting the channel even further. So if you want to check that out, Link will be in the description below. Now it's time to go to Paris. Come on, Smeralda, help me put the lyrics up. Smeralda will be back there. I can't share this spotlight. <laughs> Please give me some of those Gregorian chants. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Am I weird for being excited about this? Don't answer. God, it's so freaking beautiful. <laughs> oh my god! What was that transition? Work of art. Oof. You know what? This music motif in Hunchback just makes all my hairs go up. That was gorgeous. Bells of Notre Dame. So, they don't have the jester who starts the movie in this? I mean, fine by me, I don't love him. <laughs> oh, of course, it's based on the book. Okay. Oh, this is exciting. I will not survive this. Okay, so we're going all the way back to when Frollo was young. Nice. It's so cool to be learning a bit more about this story. It's crazy, I had no idea he had a brother. Wow, I've never been more curious to know how he becomes such a vile man. This is perfect casting, isn't it? I can't believe I'm actually feeling sympathy for Frollo right now. What the hell? There's someone you can help. <gasps> Quasimodo is not just a random child? Okay, this is a game changer, you guys. <laughs> I can't deal with how epic the music is. This is too much. Jesus Christ. I may not have saved my brother, but I will save this thing. Unnecessarily rude. Please don't. Please don't. We don't need more men thinking like you, honestly. I love how the melody gains a sort of traveling circus element to it. It fits the bill for Quasimodo being seen as a freak, but also for Esmeralda being part of a traveling community. Sweet spot. What makes a monster? What makes a man? Yes! Is the moral will hopefully reach by the end. Are you Are you serious? No joke, my heart is racing. Did he really have 
have to reach for the heavens like that. I have extremely mixed feelings after this though. Frollo is one of my favorite Disney villains because he is the one I hate the most. Simple as that. And that's due to the fact that he is literally just an evil man. He doesn't have any sort of mystical power like most Disney villains do. He's not cursed, he's not fighting magic, he's just your regular bad guy. And it's the realness of it that makes him one of the worst villains. Or the best, depending on your perspective. <laughs> it's the fact that Frollo exists in real life. So having this background for him is awesome. It will probably make me see the story in him from a slightly different angle, but it's still very emotionally confusing. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to sympathize with this vile man. What are you doing? <laughs> but now I'm even more curious to see how this goes. I will keep you, feed you, teach you, dress you. Wow, his behavior toward Quasimodo is quite different. With good reason, but that changes everything. I am of these crimes for which the world shows little pity. You do not take that line, yeah. Let's talk about this. And these are crimes for which the world shows little pity. By the time we hear that in the movie, we know Frollo is an awful person. So when he sings that in the movie, it's because he knows it firsthand because he is someone who shows no pity himself. But here it takes a little turn because there's a chance for all says it because he's truly afraid of his, his brother's son getting hurt. You see kids, backstory makes all the difference. <laughs> Why does he sound so old? Alone. Oh, does he have the little figurines as well? I wonder how it feels to pass a day God, listen to their orchestration. How they managed to improve on the movie, I'll never know, but this is absolutely fantastic. Just to live one day. Oh, so much to take from that as well. For people who are down below, it's probably not even as good as his picturing because, you know, most of them are peasants uh, living under the dominance of the church. But for him, who is looking at it from far away and as someone who has no freedom, that is actually something to crave for. I just really love how this story explores perspective in so many ways, J not just in terms of how he craves to be down there with the people because he doesn't know how tough life can actually be down there as well. But in terms of the core message, right, what makes a man and what makes a monster, it's also a matter of perspective and which side you're on. Oh, okay. Can you hear how the music slowly grow goes from high notes to low and how that gives you the sense of movement? Just listen to this. So it goes. I don't think you get that in the movie in terms of the orchestration. I think it's different, if I'm not mistaken. And I really like what they did here because I, I don't know about the stage show. I don't know what it looks like on stage. But this song is a very physical sequence in the movie, right? Where he's sliding down the roofs and hanging from the walls. And I'm assuming you can't do too much of that physical action on stage. There are limitations. So it's so cool how the music is sort of filling that gap to give us the sensation of movement even if we're not seeing as much on stage we can hear it I'm, I'm honestly, I don't even have the words for the music in this. It's another level of, I don't even know what. Oh, this one must be so fun on stage. Oh, <laughs> he actually sounds a bit like whoever does his voice in the movie, doesn't he? Sounds 
sounds dangerous, but I kind of want to be there. <laughs> Love that. Oh, here he is. But where is this morale dude? Just asking the important questions here. Alright, this is new. Mm. He sounds a bit doofy, doesn't he? <laughs> Okay, we'll have more meat in every character's backstory, huh? Exciting! Such Gaston vibes, I don't like it. Rest in Good job! Trust Frollo to twist things for the bad. Oh. <laughs> okay. I like how the message changes at the very last second. Yeah, that was uh, interesting. Bit of a weird way to introduce a character, but it was a choice. <laughs> okay. This must be when Esmeralda comes in. Let's go! I hear facts. Yes! Can you tell Esmeralda is my favorite Disney princess who is not a princess? <laughs> she knows what she's doing. <laughs> oh my god, I need Esmeralda for this! I will be a terrible puppet master. <laughs> Oh, here come the men. I mean, I totally understand them, but just let her dance in peace. She has a higher range than the voice in the movie, right? Which makes her sound younger to me for some reason. Um, I was expecting something more traditional from the music, not gonna lie like mandolins and accordions. Also thought it was gonna be more of a, pardon the reference, fiery melody to introduce her. A bit more energetic to match her personality. But it was good. It was good, wasn't it? Yeah, stop talking to the doll now. Here it is, the moment you've been waiting, waiting for. Now's the time we crowd. Oh no, no, I hate this. Ugly folk, forget your shyness. That's so mean. Wouldn't you like to be crowned king for a day? Come on, girl. You know this could only end badly. We asked for the ugliest face in Paris. Why are they so mean? It's kind of sad, actually. They're, they're just piling up all the bad things they want to do to let out in one day. It's like the purge, really. Well, for emotions, I guess. <laughs> Jesus Christ, the choir is just sensational. Are these people like actual angels? Because they sound like them. How could you do this to me? This Big gaslighty, Frollo. This is also original to the stage show, right? I don't remember this. So the poor hunchback retreated back in and they followed the gypsy girl who'd never been through the door. Yes! Give me God help the outcast! And each window and pillar and arch seemed to fill her with love. Oh, that's beautiful. My god, this is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Anthem! So excited for a different rendition of this. I will be singing along. I apologize in advance. I don't know if you can hear me. Yes, I know I'm just 
an outcast. Still, I see your face and wonder. Oh, I love those lines. It says so much about faith and how you can only truly believe in something once you feel close to it. Not in the physical sense, but in the sense that you can see yourself in that thing or that person or that entity. You can recognize yourself in it or recognize your feelings being reflected. Otherwise, it's just fear or respect and not really truly belief. At least that's how I see it. There, there's got to be that element of recognition for true connection to happen. And to me, that's where true belief comes from. Show them the mercy Help my people Oh my god. This song Help the outcasts Nobody will Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. Peak emotion. Isn't it wonderful how the music stays on climax until she says I ask and only settles down in for nothing. So the tension in the music keeps building up until she breaks the cycle of greedy people asking for things that maybe they don't even deserve and the music sort of follows that story. I ask because she's like high up there with those people being greedy and asking for all of these amazing things. And then the music settles with her for nothing because she breaks their cycle. I thought we all were oh. Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. <laughs> it's so beautiful. So this was very close to the original, which I appreciate. I honestly, I love how this song reveals her character and her sense of justice while serving as a great plot device by raising questions about God and men. Absolutely incredible! I'm not sure I like what he's doing to his voice, to be honest. It makes him sound so much older. Unless he is older in the stage show. Oh, how I love these lines with double meaning. Nothing needs fighting and no one needs pity because you're so removed from that reality down below that you can't see the problems, right? If you're high up in your tower. Everything looks perfect from, from that far away. But at the same time, this is a very nice critique to the people who govern from the high towers without ever experiencing the life down below without ever knowing what the life of the people they govern is really like. I really love the double meaning there. Just for a moment, things stop. Nice touch. Maybe we were wrong here. So the congregation substitutes the gargoyles in this? Or are they still there? Or is the congregation the gargoyles? <laughs> Overlapping lines are so satisfying for some reason. So this is basically their ultimate bonding song, right? Wow. Wow. There's a lot of location-related songs in this, huh? <laughs> It's out there and up here and down below. They really like to make sure we know where the characters are, don't they? <laughs> Frollo began mm. to walk the streets, night after night. Okay, story time. He thought he saw her everywhere. And he likes Until this. Night, he heard the sound of distant music and laughter. Coming from within a tavern. Okay, I like it. Okay, now we're talking. This is this Esmeralda music style I, I was waiting for. Yeah, sure, Frodo. Totally believe you don't want to join them. Now we're talking. <laughs> I hate that they make me sympathize with him. God damn it. Oh, 
Okay, I want more of that. Is there an explanation for why his voice changes drastically when he's singing? Sorry, I'm just really attached to the voice situation. <laughs> I just want to hug him tightly. Totally get you, my friend. I'd be healed from all this may if Esmeralda smiled at me too. I swear it must be heaven's love. Oh, you sweet thing. Nice. Yes. And the music motif in the back. It's killing me. Oh. Okay, but the way this really romantic song transitions into this one that is pure lust while keeping the religious mot motif. Bloody hell! No pun intended. <laughs> I freaking love this song so much. Do you guys know Anna Pence's um, cover of this? Because you should. It's mind-blowing. Yeah. <laughs> His voice. Am I ever gonna be not impressed with his voice? I don't think so. No, I'm so much purer than the common Are you? Why are you having to tell Maria about it then? If you were that pure, we wouldn't be here singing this song. Scorch my soul. Again, totally understandable. Like fire in my skin. Desire turning me. To see. I'd give anything to see this live. What happens on stage, please tell me. So much stronger than ah. I hate how he sees himself as this purest being and blames her for his own feeling. But I love that line. The letter takes the fires of hell. Now, Gypsy, it's your turn. Calm down, man. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, I was expecting more of a belt there. Maybe, maybe at the very end. Let's see. Okay, let's see, let's see. Oh! Yes! Ooh, I need a little break from this. <laughs> You're such a simp. I bet your torch is burning for a little. <laughs> is Frollo from us? We can this must be punished. We need a mashup. Oh, they do the house burning thing on stage? God help the outcasts, or nobody will. Coward, traitor, gypsy Ooh, horde. nice cut. Expunge this heathen gypsy horde before we're over. All because of horniness. So many references to previous songs on this one. It's really cool. Again, the double meaning in all Paris burns for Esmeralda gives me so much joy. Wow! <laughs> they have to stop with the music motif because I will not survive. Jokes about Frodo being horny aside, even though it's not a joke. This is precisely why he is the worst Disney villain, or the best, again, depending on your perspective. He doesn't need musical powers or prophecies or any magic to do his terrible deeds. He's out here burning entire cities out of pure entitlement, and that is too real for comfort. I don't understand the words, but I love this choir so much that it doesn't matter. No, 
but seriously, are these people human? I'm um, serious question. Wait a second. Are they reprising the songs in Latin? Is that what's happening here? Because if it is, that's brilliant. And I can't believe it took so long to realize. Jesus Christ. This is stunning. S swear to God. How can I find her? The amulet she gave you. But what is it? Hmm. Just a web and That's a not in the movie, is it? Must be a clue. She gave it to you because she knows you're okay. smart. Okay. Wait. I know this. That's a bridge. That's a street. And this tree. Oh, cool. I'll save Esmeralda. Her angel. Aww. Oh. Give her sanctuary. Protected at my side. A little like a bride. Oh, it got awkward real quickly. <laughs> It's a bit of a strange parallel given the theme of the song to be honest. Okay, it's a, it's a funny theme, this one. Welcome to the court of miracles. Brother, you're there. And the blind can see. see. But the dead don't talk. <laughs> so you won't be around to reveal what you found. <laughs> If you get out of line, <laughs> he's bad luck! Jeez, no need to be so aggressive! But we must protect at all cost our secret. Our lives are mm. That's also sort of understandable if they're being, you know, haunted. They just shouldn't be having so much fun with torturing people, but. Okay, this is another new one, right? I like how it contrasts with the miracles in the previous song. In a place of miracles, where the blind oh, okay. It's really cool how they basically got the same metaphor to represent truth and deceit, basically, right? So there's truth in their love for each other, but deceit in the way that the gypsies have to lie to survive. We have the literal court of miracles where the people who pretend to have some sort of affliction can finally stop pretending. Paralleling this metaphorical place of miracles where love makes you feel like you're experiencing a natural miracle. Gee, how many times did I say miracle? <laughs> as cheesy as it is, you gotta love the good old parallel songs. Oh, was this where he finds out about the two of them? Oh, that's so good. <laughs> Brilliant how many perspectives meet on this one. Nice. And I love how the miracle means different things for each of them. <laughs> so the gypsies are going in a place of miracles because they're looking for the actual place where they will be treated kindly and finally accepted. Or we could also see it as in they're so hopeless about finding that place that it could only be a miracle. Then we have Quasimodo literally asking where is his place in the world? Because he's also so hopeless that only a miracle would help him fit in. And then Phoebus and Esmeralda have finally found that miracle in each other. I'm really loving how one idea is being explored so extensively and applied to all the characters differently. I used to this really is the moment all hope is lost. God have mercy. No, she she does have the same range as whoever sings in the movie, right? No. Oh, I actually know it won't happen. <laughs> Never mind. Wow, 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 wow. That is beautiful writing. Wow. They're really mixing this with the melody of God Help the Outcasts. 
where she's praying by asking, while here she's praying by hoping, right? Perfection! Oof. When the piano dropped! I loved it. Yes. This is probably one of the shows that revisits melodies the most out of the ones I've done in this series. And it makes it so easy for you to dive into the mental and emotional state that you're, you're supposed to be in at these specific moments of reprising this music. It's so intelligent in that way. How it plays with your emotions through the music. What do you know of all the things I feel? Only made of stone. Oh, so they are versions of the movie oh, Gargoyles. I know she's not she's not dying, and I'm still nervous. <laughs> she's not dying, right? Okay, he wishes to be made of stone as in not have to have feelings. They really like a metaphor in this, don't they? <laughs> yes! Oh, quasi. Oh, I hate that there's logic to his thinking. Such a complicated relationship between him and Frollo and Faith. You're right, Quasimodo. We're only made of stone. Nice. Wait a second. He's actually not gonna try to save her? I don't like where this is going. Wow. Wow. Okay. Oh. Bring it home, baby! Jesus Christ. I am extremely scared right now. Oh, shut up, Rollo! Love so much. <laughs> and save yourself. Think of what I've offered. Ugh. What is your answer? That's right. I thought they wouldn't do the spit thing. Appreciate that. Ah, oh, thank God. <laughs> I was generally scared <laughs> that they were gonna change it. I'm truly vibing with this choir. Go quasi, go quasi. This is epic. It's like Lemis, but religious. <laughs> it's nothing like Lemis. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> awesome. Oh, ho, 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 ho. This is amazing! I'm so pumped! <laughs> Jesus freaking Christ! It's crazy. It's crazy. I mean, there's, there's two main ways to show the development of a character. You either choose contrast, completely different themes between their starting point and their ending point or you use the same exact idea in a different context or a different mindset usually both and the latter is more common in musical theater to be fair and they do that so beautifully with the reprise of ideas and especially the reprise of music here that i just i honestly i just can't get over it Huge. They really got me for a second there, believing she wouldn't make it. It's fine. It's fine. You're fine. 
at the, the top, top of, of the world. world. <laughs> wow, they were really like, how many reprises do you want? Yes. You're such a good friend, Quasimodo. My god, Esmeralda, you don't have to say friend no, every five friend. seconds. <laughs> don't make this awkward. Is she dead? You wish. At last we're free of Esmeralda. He truly believes that, that being free of her would have repressed his horniness. It's hilarious. <laughs> <sighs> he aggravates me so deeply. You, the wicked one. Tell him, Quasi. And the wicked shall not go unpunished. This is my time. It's my revenge. I mean, theirs. <laughs> he deliberately kills him. Savage. Also, okay, I need to point out how cool the perspective of the city below changes throughout the show. How he goes from this wonderful place that Quasimodo dreams about and craves for and slowly develops into this cruel place until it literally becomes an abyss by the end. This feels quite different from the movie, actually. Nice. Wow, wow. What makes a monster and what makes a monster? How could I forget that main question? Love how when we go back to the start. I'm sorry, but this choir is criminal. It's indecent. I need a hug. That was so much. It was too much. I am genuinely overwhelmed. Obviously, this felt quite different from the movie because Disney was mainly aiming at a very young audience. But knowing this a bit better now, I'm kind of glad that this is not a Disney produced show. Or at least I'm assuming it's not because it was off Broadway, right? I think that really gave them the opportunity to explore the story from a more adult perspective and to add elements that gave it a breath of fresh air, like Frollo's backstory, which completely t changes your perspective on his relationship with Quasimodo. I don't know that it's probably part of the book, right? It's probably a change that Disney made for the movie, I'm assuming, but I really liked how it gave you a completely different perspective on many of the elements of the story without losing any of the elements that make the film so good. I'm also glad I decided to not watch any bootlegs because missing the moments that are not on the cast recording really helped me focus on the music and appreciate how insanely out of this world it is. It really felt like watching someone weave this very complex tapestry of songs and the way they kept going back and forth and interlacing, intertwining <laughs> the melodies. Phenomenal. The music and how they worked it to tell the story was definitely my favorite thing about the show. Did you enjoy this video? Then make sure to leave your like in your comments below and I'll see you next time to conquer the world of musical theatre. Keep singing. Ciao!